So we're getting ready to do the deck here. We got some tools set up. Uh, I typically on in a deck like this, this is a, a restain, same color. We would on a color change or a brand new deck, we're gonna be using it. We would be using an airless sprayer, spraying the gaps in between because it's very difficult to get down in the gaps. And we use an airless sprayer with like a 210 or a 208 tip to spray in between each plank. I got an airless sprayer out here. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. We're not gonna do it here because this is the exact same color. So we don't have to worry about getting down in between the planks because we sprayed it last time and it looks really good. But I got a bunch of other tools. We're gonna to be staining by hand. We're gonna be using a stain brush extension pole. This is what we're gonna be using to lay out the deck. We've got some buckets right here, buckets and molars, because we've got some spindles and stuff to do. Be using hand stain brushes, um, large and small stain brushes. I uh, got some masking tools. All the tools and accessories we use are typically down in the video description below. So if you want to learn a little bit more about them and even purchase them possibly, just check out the video description below at the end of this video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the little notification bell right next to that. Because if you hit the subscribe button, subscribe to us, but don't hit the notification bell, you'll never get notified every time we come out with a new video. It's free, easy to do, it's very simple. I'm gonna be doing some masking we got a hand master we don't want to get any overspray if we're spraying but even if we're just hand brushing and rolling it's easy to get splatters or get stuff on the siding of the house or even the concrete so we're going to be using um, a hand master to keep stuff off of concrete and off the siding uh, we already did all the sanding and prep work so um, we're going to be moving those tools off uh, the tapes we're using we've got two tapes we're using if you're gonna have any type of bleeding issues, stuff getting through, you're worried about um, it bleeding through, getting on the house or getting on the concrete, use frog tape. Um, the blue is the production um, frog tape. It's a little less expensive than green frog tape. Comes in four packs. Then, or you can use frog tape, production tape, orange. This doesn't have the same technology, paint block technology that stops paint from bleeding through the tape, but it's great, um, both of them are great tapes. So we're gonna be using frog tape blue along the house and the concrete. Um, I've got a, we gotta blow the deck off. So we've sanded it after, um, after pressure washing it. And there's just a little bit of dust. We did a little bit of sanding on some corners and stuff. Got our Milwaukee blower, we're gonna be um, blowing off the deck, getting it all um, dusted off and ready to go. So I've got a, I'm going to have a pan that this thing is going to be used out of to lay out the deck. This thing is a great brush, the um, Goliath um, brush. This is very similar to the Deck Boss, if not exactly the same. Six inch stain brush makes it very easy for laying out your deck. Um, so I think that's about it. If there's any other thing about any of the tools and stuff along the way, we'll um, discuss those along the way, but let's get staining the deck now. got a little bit more masking to do this is kind of like one of those processes that nobody wants to do the prep but the prep is typically always the most important process when it comes to painting it prevents disasters prevents paint from spilling getting on things you don't want it to if you were to get stain on your concrete or stain on your house uh, you're gonna have to touch that kind of stuff up and it um, makes it the job a lot more difficult. Sometimes you can't touch it up properly. So you definitely wanna do the necessary processes when it comes to prep. So spend the time doing the prep. So the masking, drop cloths. If you don't have that equipment, you should get that equipment so you can do that. So now we're gonna get the staining process started. I got my deck product. I am today using Olympic Elite, it's a solid color stain. Once again, it's been matched to the exact color this deck is now. So we'll just be restaining it. It's, um, they're self priming products. You don't have to do any priming of the deck, even where you sanded it to bare wood. That's one of the great conveniences of using solid color stains. 
So we're going to start from the front. We're just going to work our way out. That's one of those things you can end up, um, if you're working multiple t people, you can end up working um, your way back into a corner where you can't get out of. And I've done that before, doing epoxy garage floors where you're stuck. So we're just going to um, think this out logically. We're going to move our way out this way. And then we can actually exit with all of our tools and products out the yard and out the side yard right there. So we're going to start from this up here. We're going to cut in up here right along the house along the um, railing and then work our way out with our um, goliath brush i'm um, putting the stain down and laying it out i'm going to show you the sprayer and once again um, some of these um, wide gaps right here you would typically want to spray them i'm going to be using a 30 inch extension with a 310 tip to spray some of these gaps just to make sure that the stain gets down into them. It's good to have like a foam brush. You can use a foam brush to do your gaps too if you don't have a sprayer. I'll show you what that looks like. You just stuck a foam brush down in there, run it down inside, and that's another quick, easy way to do the gaps. The One of the things about making your deck look prof done professionally and not like a do-it-yourselfer did it is to do those gaps. If you look down those gaps, you should see that it's coated all the way down you know, um, on the boards and some, some of the gaps might be too tight that you can't get a brush down there or the sprayer won't spray down in, them in there, but you typically can't see down there either. So I'm um, gonna start right here and do our cut-ins now. You see, I got, so there's two of us working on the deck. And so it's a lot easier if there's two people, you know, working on the deck at a time. One person's doing the cut-ins, one person's filling in the body and I'm using this, Goliath deck brush right here. And as I'm putting the product on, I'm just laying it out in the direction of the deck planks and, and I'm gonna get it on there, brush it in, and then I'm just gonna lay it out when I'm done. And the reason why I like this brush is I can lay it out just like this and it's the width of an entire plank. And if you don't lay your deck stain out you could leave brush strokes kind of just like laying out a wall or laying out your trim it's the same thing if you want your deck to look professional you want to apply your stain and lay it out once again this is a this deck color is the same color so i'm not don't have to worry about the gaps as much as i do um if it was a different color i'm going to show you i got some foam brushes where the gaps get wide, I'll show you what it looks like to uh, use foam brushes to do in between the deck. So I'm just working right along here. Sometimes I like using a four foot pole. You, if you have another person or yourself, you could roll it on with a nine inch roller and then you can take and lay it out with your deck brush, but um, if you don't want to have a roller and a brush going, you know, you could just use the deck brush. And this deck brush does pretty good because it's got really soft filaments on it. So it does get down in the sides or in between the gaps fairly well, but not as good as uh, the sprayer would or the um, foam brush as well. But it's just, once again, it a lot of it depends on the color if i was going from a white deck to a black deck um just hypothetically that's where you would really notice a difference so once again one of the great advantages of this deck brush is it's wider than you know your deck planks so um makes it really convenient you're not getting lap marks you know in between planks so I'll move my sprayer out here. I'll show you, you know, spraying in between some of the gaps out here, because out here it's a little bit more faded out here. And I'm gonna be, I've um, got my sprayer set up right here to, and started testing it right there. Um, one thing I ran into is this product. This is a product from Olympic, um, Olympic Elite. Um, doesn't like to be sprayed through um, fine finish tips, um, normal high production tips. It worked through a um, HEA tip, not a 311. I had to get up to a 515, drop it down really low in pressure so I don't have a wide fan 
So I did a little bit of, took a little bit of tweaking or um, a lot of tweaking with a lot of frustration, but I eventually figured it out. So here's the foam brushes. Um, these are just premier foam brushes and I don't try to clean them out and save them, but we just throw them away at the end of the day, just inexpensive foam brushes. And I'm gonna show you that here as we work our way out here. Mondo's cruising right along. You doing all right there, Mondo? Yeah. I typically like, you know, laying out in one direction too. So I just lay out, pull towards me and I'm going to work in, you know, kind of like four foot sections and I'll go back to the other end and start again. But I, you, there's, you know, you can take in many different ways you can stain a deck and no way is necessarily the right way. But um, I, I rather brush it than roll it because I just like the finished effect of what the deck looks like after it's been brushed versus rolled. Now, once again, you could use a roller to um, increase your speed if you want. Some people will argue that rolling is faster and then laying it out with a brush, and we've done it both ways. Um, very effectively and just today i'm showing you how we're just doing it with a deck brush the goliath deck brush but if you weren't working in teams like i'm working here with armando or we're um two of us working on this deck at once if you didn't have a team to do it then i would do all my cut-ins first and then i would do my field and fill it in and if I'm spraying all the gaps, I typically will spray all my gaps first. And because it's usually pretty sunny and dry here in um, Idaho, our climate, uh, you usually could spray your, all your gaps and let it set for about 15 minutes and then come back and fill in your field. But it's kind of like, um, you know, if you got smooth walls, you know, you can um, roll your walls, brush your walls. Um, there's a lot of different things and each one will give, you know, different effects, you know, to the wall, what it's gonna look like. If you roll it, it's gonna stipple it. If you brush it, it's gonna leave brush marks. And um, when it comes to a deck, I really like the, the brushed finish on a deck. So it's just my, you know, once again, my personal preference. So. A lot of um, painting is you got to do, you know, what works for you, um, what's the most efficient, you know, for you and your team, too. I like to teach people that there's not a, one way to, you know, paint trim, spray trim, but uh, there's multiple different ways, and you just got to find what way works efficiently for you and your team. All we can do is give you some pointers of how we do it and you try it. If you like it, if it works, um, that's awesome. If it doesn't, just file it away in your memory for another day. Maybe it will work another day. Okay, so when it comes to actually um, painting and staining the deck, or actually staining the deck, uh, you don't have to have an airless sprayer, but I use an airless sprayer to do all my cut-ins and also to get in between um, each individual deck plank. So there's, typically a deck has um, you know, gaps and they range anywhere from no gap to a gap all the way up to about a half inch on this deck. And if you just roll it or brush the tops of it, you don't get the color down in between the gaps of the planks, then um, you're gonna see the color difference if it, it's actually a different color, if you're going from one color to the next. I don't spray a deck completely because a deck itself, you want to brush and roll a deck, that's um, gonna give you penetration and adhesion, and an airless sprayer does not do that. An airless sprayer gets down into cracks and crevices that a brush and a roller can. All right, so we worked our way off the deck now. 
come down, you can see we've got some masking. We used masking around with uh, blue frog tape so we didn't get any bleeding in on our concrete. Worked our way down and I'll just talk about, we got the spindles up here and this is a good time to explain to you kind of what I meant about not, uh, what I meant about not working yourself into a corner or something. And this is not working ourselves into a corner, but we did the whole top of the deck and now this side of the spindles right here, we would have to walk on the deck to get to this side of the spindles and hand railing. And if this deck wasn't gonna be dry enough by today to get up there to do that, then we, we wouldn't be able to get the deck done in a day. So um, I do have to admit um, that was my mistake. So I forgot about that because we were just so wrapped up in doing this video. But what we should have did is just did that side of the railing first right there and then started on the deck that way we wouldn't have to jump on the back on the deck but the deck is this is dry enough now where we could walk on it with our socks so in a pickle um, you can take your shoes off walk on it with your socks and do that within a uh, couple hours if it's a nice sunny warm day so we're just hand doing our spindles over here just using brushes and weenie rollers um, the sprayer i did use this sprayer quite a bit uh, for doing the um, in between um, some of the planks and doing the steps and stuff doing the cut-ins it just makes it so much faster and some of these wide gaps and some of the the portions of the deck and stuff that's really worn out separated using the sprayer makes it very convenient you don't have to have a sprayer if you're a do-it-yourselfer you, you can stuff some foam brushes down in there and foam brushes will work uh, too but you definitely want to get the paint down in those cracks and crevices so um, we're continuing to uh, work right along. This is one coat, so you don't need to put two coats, uh, especially on this because this is a solid color stain going over the exact same color. Now, once again, if you're doing um, a black on a white or white on a black, you know, you could possibly have to do two coats, but it's a water-based product, easy to clean up. Um, continuing right along, I'll give you some more tips and tricks, you know, um, as we go here. So I just want to talk a little bit about the sprayer setup because I know some people are probably going to have some questions with that. I was using a Titan a 440 Impact, um, ran into all kinds of problems in the very beginning. Um, I'll tell you this, it's always strain your paints. Uh, one thing I realized too, I didn't strain the paints at the beginning and then I strained it later on. There's a lot of debris in the paint. The Olympic, um, Olympic Elite has been performing really well so far. I like it. It did have a lot of like sand and grit in it. So I thought it was the sprayer problem. I switched to a Titan um, 410 and um, still the same problems. It was spitting really bad. So I switched back to the Impact, went up a tip size, strained the paint, went up to um, a 515 and then I turned the pressure down really well, really low so it would drop the fan width really low. So I had a, I was running at about 800 PSI, low pressure. I was using a 30 inch extension and the pressure is so low. That's why I didn't, I didn't need to wear a respirator. Wasn't create any overspray um, or anything, but that's um, the setup that I had spraying um, all the, in between the spindles, 30 inch extension. I was running an RX Pro gun with a um, HEA tip. So the only tip that I could find, no production tips, no fine finish tips would work on the Titan HEA tip. So, you know, in my determination, it's been very rare in my career um, that I've run into to products that will not spray through an airless sprayer um, and I it's uh, from my conclusion the Olympic elite um, struggled going through small orifice sizes of sp um, spray tips and even new tips and so an HEA tip is a different size um, orifice designed for high um, efficiency airless spraying and it worked with the 515 tip or I use the 515 or a 619 also worked if I drop down to a 311 HEA tip it did not work so that's the setup I had I got an HEA gauge that is on the pump uh, right here. And so I can actually tell, you know, the pressure I was running at the pump. So, and I was running 800 at the pump, I was running just a 25 foot uh, whip hose. So this is my custom whip hose. And then I had a three foot whip attached to the end of that right there. And that short length of whip um, inside diameter, it makes it so you don't have to load up a whole lot of product into your sprayer. So I don't have to have a whole half gallon to load up. 
almost done here. Going to be doing some touch-ups and clean-up. And um, if you have, do you have any questions or comments about this video, just leave them in the questions and comments down below. We'd love to hear what you have to say. And we try to answer all the questions and comments you know, in a timely fashion. We do get thousands of questions and comments a day. So sometimes it is a little bit difficult. But um, back on to the staining. All right, there you have it. The deck is all complete now. Turned out great. I got some final thoughts on the Olympic Elite solid color stain that I did use. I did have some spray in problems with it, but I'm still not convinced it's actually the problem with um, the stain itself and possibly not the sprayers itself. I did make some adjustments, uh, strained it multiple times. The product uh, went up in tip size and then it worked for spraying the gaps in between the deck. Um, some other things, it actually brushed, rolled very well, covered very well. Um, the dry time was excellent. We were able to get on and walk on the deck after just a couple hours. Here's something else really incredible about this product. So um, it was completely sunny in the day. We were um, staining the deck and all of a sudden some clouds came over right in the middle of staining one portion of the deck. It started sprinkling and it did milk that portion of the deck. And then all of a sudden it got sunny again. I redid that portion of the deck and then it was all done. Night came, all of a sudden thunderstorms clouds came it was nowhere in the forecast to do because you never want to paint a deck if there's um rain or moisture forecasted for 48 hours but it rained it rained all night it rained for two days i thought i was gonna have to redo the deck the deck turned out it dried cured didn't even milk absolutely incredible so um it was still it withstood the moisture um even setting on the deck for multiple days um incredible another thing is we had to go back and do some touch-ups uh that same day in the middle of the deck some light spots miss spots and we touched them up and you can't even see where you touched them up so it did not flash it didn't leave brush strokes it didn't leave haloing or anything like that even with a dark color like this um, even though we were uh, doing the same exact color it did cover very well also so i like the product the only thing i don't like about the product is the sheen it, it had uh, a very high sheen compared to all the deck products and stains that i've used in the past significantly higher but after about uh, two weeks now it's actually toned down quite a bit and it looks a lot better but it just made the deck look a little bit plasticky to me and so i i would prefer it just to be a little bit flatter that's the only negative things i gotta i gotta say about the product olympic elite there you have it um staining the deck Hopefully you've got some great tips and tricks that's gonna help you stain your deck faster and more efficient. If you have, please consider giving us a thumbs up on this video if you've enjoyed it, if you've learned anything. Also hit the subscribe button and you need to hit the notification bell right next to the subscribe button because you won't get notified by subscribing every time I come out with a new video or next time I teach you how to do a deck or a house or anything else. Subscribe notification bell. It's free, simple, easy to do. Out.